In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off, and we are going to try out our deployment. And we're going to see how this works. What we're going to do in this case is I'm going to use Hyper-V, and I'm going to set up a new virtual machine and deploy Windows there. So from, from my main machine, my parent partition, if you will, I'm going to install Windows onto a child partition using the network boot and WDS. So there's a couple of steps to this. Uh, I've done this before, and uh, here's an old virtual machine of mine, but I'm going to create a brand new virtual machine for this process. I'm going to call this one uh, WDS Client. And what I'm going to do with that is boot this one off the network, install Windows, and show that that can all go through pretty smoothly. The generation is going to be important to us. If we're installing a newer operating system, we can use this generation too. But the key thing that we want here is the Pixie boot using a standard network adapter. Now we've got our generation 2 that we can use, but our guest operating system must be at least Windows Server 2012 or 64-bit Windows 8 or newer. Uh, but they have the, the capability to speak with those synthetic drivers of the generation 2 Hyper-V virtual machines. So it's going to be generation 2 for this example. And our startup memory don't stick with the default of 512 um, unless you're really really hurting for memory uh, that's going to give you some trouble during your installation process I recommend doing at least 1024 uh, in my case I can afford the 2048 so I'm gonna go with a little bit more which should actually speed up the installation a little bit um, maybe not too much and then uh, now each virtual machine is going to have a ne network adapter. So I have two virtual switches that I created earlier. One's connected to my Ethernet card as an external switch, and the other one is connected to my Wi Fi, which is on an internal switch. I'm going to go with Ethernet, and that's the connection that I'm going to make um, for my child partition. You may not have choices there, you might. It all depends on which virtual switches you set up. The thing you can't do is choose a private switch in this example because the host machine, the parent partition I should say, is not able to talk on a private switch. It can talk on an internal or an external switch though. So the next screen here talks about making my virtual hard disk. I'm going to just leave things as the defaults are. Uh, I'm not going to fill up that 127 gigs anyway and uh, I'll just create this new virtual hard disk. I'll say next and how am I going to install my operating system well we're going to do this choice today we're going to install an operating system from a network based installation server or WDS in our case and then I can click finish it creates that virtual machine WDS client here and the state is off so the first thing I want to do is I want to choose connect even before I start the machine I want to see the post I want to see that power on self test of this virtual machine so even though it's off I can still bring up this screen and get ready so that when I start that machine I can see exactly what happens and I can troubleshoot pixie network boot using IPv4 and we'll see what happens here uh, really quickly it went through and it grabbed an IP address you can see and I'm gonna choose enter for that network installation now that went by really quick you might need to pause the video to see exactly what that screen showed uh, but here's my uh, IP address of my server that it was pulling in that boot.wim you may have noticed now all this is happening quite quickly but that boot whim is starting this program right here it hasn't actually pushed out the installation yet all that is is this um, Windows PE essentially this uh, this tiny version of Windows that I can use to deploy my operating system. So here it is, Windows Deployment Services. Pick my locale, and then put in a username and password for my domain. Um, in my case, um, administrator, 
and my password right now is blank. Uh, whoops. Always got to read these, and in this case, I didn't, and my format needs to be domain backslash user or user at domain. Okay, so I can do administrator at domain 01.local in my case. And that's going to let me on through. You just need a user with valid privileges to do this. And there's the one image I pulled. I chose to only pull the server data center. This is the server with a GUI. It's the evaluation copy. Uh, and there's some details about it as well. But if you had added in additional images, you can pick. You can say, do I want 2012? Do I want Windows 8? What do I want something different? And then I can say next. Here's my 127 gig virtual hard disk that I created in Hyper-V. And I'm just going to install onto that. And now I'm waiting for the server to initiate my session. I had chosen to not require the approval for this installation. So it would have normally waited for the administrator to go in and say, yes, OK, you can proceed. But in my case, it didn't require that because I had chosen not to use that setting. Now, in my case, I'm using um, a solid state hard drive. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly this runs through. Uh, but it's pulling the image off the hard drive, and it's actually writing back to the same hard drive. So there can still be some, uh, some delay there. But it should go by pretty quickly. Uh, the fact that we made it to this point is a great sign. Normally, if there's any failures, it's going to be at the very beginning when we get that post and occasionally you might see an error uh, such as um, the pixie server failed to respond and it might be that DHCP isn't working and you didn't get an IP address from the network it might be an error that the pixie server wasn't able to provide an image for your boot process even though it does get an IP address that usually will happen if you're running DHCP on the same server that you're running WDS, but you haven't added in a couple of special Pixie Boot options. Uh, there's a couple of DHCP options that need to be added. One is the, the boot server, and one is the image file that you're actually deploying. Those need to be set in order for um, the DHCP server, which happens to be on your own machine, to know the information to pass along to find that next server. In my case, I pulled DHCP from my router. But Windows Deployment Services is smart enough to jump in there and, and, and intervene once that boot process is happening. And, and it gets the DHCP IP address, but it also tosses in the Pixie boot options too. So it's pretty handy that it takes care of that for us without any additional configuration. Now this process is going to take a while, uh, and you just kind of have to wait it out now, depending on if you're going from one physical machine to another physical machine, that goes a little faster. If you're going from one machine to a virtual on itself, that process is considerably slower because uh, it has to read and write to the same hard drive. So that will take a little bit of time. And uh, we'll pick this up when our installation finishes. So you probably want to pause the video until you get to this point. Um, but at this point, our installation is completed, and now we are ready to continue installing Windows. There shouldn't be anything too unusual with this part. Um, pretty much the same as installing any copy of Windows, although all of the files for the installation came in over the network. We can accept the license agreement, and we can put in our new password. Can't be blank, has to be something. So make sure it's a password that you can remember. And you can click on this little eyeball too if you want to see what that password is. Finalizes the settings, and then we are at the initial login screen. As always, to get into a virtual machine, we need to do a Control-Alt-Delete. And there's a couple of ways to do this. You can click the little button up here, or 
you can do a control alt end hotkey which is kinda handy uh, the thing you can't do is actually a control alt delete because that would send the keystrokes to the parent partition and not to this child partition this uh, virtual machine so I'll use the button and I'll log in and there it is uh, the initial login takes a little bit of time but here is my new installation of Windows 2012 R2 you can replicate this as many times as you need uh, in order to install new virtual machines and uh, it's pretty effective and it's pretty fast in comparison to other methods of doing an installation